Jonathan, do you want to check the microphone? How does this sound? Sounds good? Um, Bridgers, do you want to come and see how the microphone feels? Yeah. Just feel being at the podium? Yeah. And you can adjust the height if you need to. You can just speak into it. Good morning. Is that loud? That's loud. Is this good? Can I stand right here? No. I got to stand right here. You don't stand normally. Like, just chill. You know, put your arms up on there or something. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Okay. All right. Like this. Congrats. Hi. Welcome to the bridging ceremony. Um... We're talking. Sounds good to me. I mean, good morning. Uh, put up welcome slide. Prelude <laughs> begins about five minutes before service until nine or ten forty-five a.m. This sounds good.
Testing the vocal mic. Testing the vocal mic. Yeah. Hello to you. <laughs> Steve, during the flower cleaning, I'd love to bring you a flower. Where should I put it? On the oh, we, floor? we need a vase of like <laughs> several five dollar bill Tiffany's <laughs> and like a bourbon. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. 
I guess maybe like here? Okay, it'll be wet though, so. Um, the knot on the chair? I can just lay it on yeah. the floor if you want to do that, okay? Is that weird? No, that's fine. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping my kids bring the flowers for my mom. Huh? We have extra. There's plenty of space. Oh, were we giving people flowers? No, we're, it's, it's, no, you, you have the right idea. I just bought extra in case you think you need to remember. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully teams keep drinking. Mm -hmm.
Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Today will be a joyful day. Enter, rejoice, and come in. Enter, rejoice, and come in, or enter, rejoice, and log in if you are joining us on Zoom. It is so wonderful to see you this morning on our Bridging Sunday, on our Flower Communion Sunday, on our Annual Meeting Sunday. It's wonderful to feel the community in this room. Good to see you. We come together by the light of our chalice flame. If you're joining us from home, we invite you to light a candle or a chalice along with us as we say these words together. We light this flame as a symbol of new life, enlightening our way, as a symbol of the warmth in every human heart. Let the lighting of this flame rekindle in us the inner light of hope, of peace, of love. May we share that light with all people. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Kim Hartman, and I am the Director of Religious Education here at the Fox Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. Today is a really special service as we celebrate our fellowship youth who are bridging to young adulthood and also our very special flower communion ritual, which is a yearly tradition in our community. If you've brought flowers from, or if you've brought flowers with you, we welcome you to bring them up um, to the table here in the front. And if you don't have flowers with you, it's okay. There's plenty for everyone to enjoy. If this is your first time visiting the fellowship, I want to extend you a special welcome. We would love to help you get connected here, so after the service, you can talk with any of our staff or members of our engagement team who will wear rainbow lanyards, or you can send us an email. So it's time now to settle in. Take a deep breath. Become aware of your body wherever you are. Allow yourself to be fully present at this time together, and we're so glad that you're here. Our call together is aptly entitled Flower Communion, and it's written by the Reverend Lynn Unger. What a gathering, the purple tongues of iris licking out at spikes of lupine, the orange crepe skirts of poppies lifting over buttercup and daisy, who can be grim in the face of such abundance? There's nothing to compare, no need for beauty to compete. The voluptuous rhododendron and the plain grass are equally filled with themselves, equally declare the miracles of color and form. This is what community looks like. This vibrant jostle, stem by stem, declaring the marvelous joining. This is the face of communion, the incarnation once more, gracefully resurrected from winter. Hold these things together in your sight, purple, crimson, magenta, blue. You will be feasting on this long after the flowers are gone. Today's flower celebration is one of the few that we truly call our own as Unitarian Universalists. It's a celebration of our community, the power of diversity, the strength of our togetherness, and the beautiful possibilities of transformation. One of the foundations of this community gathered is that we cherish generosity. 
We take time each week to practice this foundation, to strengthen our ability to give as we are able and to receive when we are in need. If you are ever in need of emotional or spiritual or financial support, please know we are here for you. Do not hesitate to reach out to Reverend Sidney or myself. It is a joy for us to be able to offer help on behalf of this community. And if you're someone who is feeling stable and able to give, we ask that you do so in that spirit of generosity. On this Sunday, we celebrate the power of diversity in community. And our offering is a special collection for the work of DRUM, which stands for Diverse and Resilient Unitarian Universalist Multicultural Ministries. DRUM is a UU People of Color ministry and an anti-racist collective that brings lay and religious professionals together to overcome racism through resistance and to transform Unitarian Universalism through multicultural experiences. It's really a cool organization. It's an all-volunteer ministry. DRUM leads efforts toward becoming an anti-racist, anti-oppressive, multicultural faith movement and creating space for youth and young adult and families of color to heal and to work collectively. And so the money collected in our special collection will support this important work, and it will also help expand chaplain and pastoral care work within Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities in Unitarian Universalism. Our fellowship was a co-sponsor of DRUM's recent public virtual worship, and we're grateful for the chance to joyfully support through this special collection. To give, feel free to come up to one of our ushers who is standing in the back of the sanctuary, or you can raise your hand to have an usher come to you. If you're writing a check, please write it out to FVUUF, or the fellowship, Fox Valley Unitarian Universalist Fellowship, but put drum in the memo line of the check. And for everyone else, we encourage you to donate online or via our text to give function on a smartphone. You can follow the instructions that are on the screen or in your order of service to ensure that the funds are properly attributed to drum. Thank you. Your gifts are deeply appreciated. Part of our commitment to each other is to bring our joys and concerns to this time together, taking time to honor the joys, concerns, transitions in our lives, 
that allows us to share with each other so that our joys might feel multiplied and our sorrows divided. In a moment, we'll share those joys and concerns that have been submitted by people in our circle of care. And if you're joining us on Zoom, you can also share in the chat box whatever joy, concern, prayer request, or intention might be in your heart and on your mind. For care and connection during the week, please reach out to myself, Reverend Sidney, or Minister Alley, or contact the office. If you'd like your news in our spoken joys and concerns or our email, you can call or contact anyone on staff and fill out a website form loving community. We turn now our attention to the joys and concerns wider than those of this gathered community. We allow our minds and hearts to reach out in ever widening circles outward like ripples of water. We add our next stone for the United States. Friday was National Gun Violence Awareness Day. Grieving and angry, we join our voices with those across the nation who call for an end to gun violence. As the ripples continue, we recognize our interconnectedness across borders and oceans, and we add another stone for all LGBTQ plus siblings as we celebrate pride in the month of June. Without hesitation, we affirm as holy the hearts and bodies of all lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, intersex, asexual, aromantic, agender, two-spirit, non-binary, and bindery, and all other folks who do not identify as hetero, hetero or cis. We gratefully lift up LGBTQ plus spaces for the connection, safety, and support and joy that they bring. And if you identify as LGBTQ+, our fellowship teenagers warmly invite you to an intergenerational pride gathering here at the fellowship this Friday, 5 to 8 p.m. So we enfold all who are celebrating and all who are suffering in the embrace of our hearts and commit ourselves to acts of compassion and justice in service to those circles beyond our own. May this moment of silence help make it so. Our settling song this morning is For All That Is Our Life. It's 128 in the gray hymnal. The lyrics are on the screen. You are welcome to stand if that's how you like to sing. I'll play it through once here. and praise for all life is a gift which we are called to use to build the common good 
and make our own days For needs which others serve, for services we give, for work and its rewards, for hours of rest and love, we come with praise and thanks. And all that is our life. For sorrow we must bear, for failure, pain, and loss, for each new thing we learn, for fearful loves that pass, we come with praise and thanks. And all that is our life. For all that is our life, we sing our thanks and praise. For all life is a gift which we are called to use to build a common good and make our own days last. Thank you. At this time, we would like to invite all of the kids who want to come up to take a seat right up in front. Oh, yeah, right. Perfect. Aw. Oh, yeah. We're going to do the Wonder Box. It's right behind you. <laughs> yeah, so that I wanted to, we wanted to say that this is really, really special because we do the Wonder Box in RE, and this is the first time that we get to do it in here all together with all of us in a long, long time. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so I feel really excited because us adults, we haven't been with you for the Wonder Box for a while. Yeah. And our Wonder Box is really about reminding us, all of us, that we need to stay curious throughout our lives. So this is a way that we help ourselves think about that. What do we think? Any ideas about what's in there? We'll take a few. Yeah, yeah. Pizza. Oh, yeah. Pizza, of course. Helen. Flowers. <laughs> A graduation hat. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. A rose. Oh, a lay. Yeah. Tons of flowers. Yeah, Clara. Dirt. Leo. And a vase. Oh, oh, oh we got one more. Yes. Ari says seeds. Well, what do you think? Oh, parents have anything to guess. My goodness, I'm so glad that, you re that, that you're including everybody. <laughs> Coffee. Coffee! Yay! Coffee beans. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a scientist over here, so we'll set you up with... I don't know, Kim, I'm excited to find out. Can we get a, a drum roll? Let's maybe? get a drum roll! Okay. Kim, I'm not sure I know what this is. I see a little pouch with three little dirt balls. Okay. Seed bombs? Seed bombs. That sounds like a big deal. Hey, oh, you made, made these? Those? You They're made flower bombs. bombs. Yeah. And, and who made them? Yeah, you, you guys, guys made did. these? Yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, some of us made them, yeah. That's really cool because seeds make me think about all these beautiful flowers that we have here. Um, and 
all of these flowers, they all grew from seeds, right? Right? Yeah. And it's kind of like how all of us are always growing constantly. And today we get to honor the youth in our fellowship who have grown into young adults. Very cool. It's so neat that we as a fellowship family get to help each other learn and grow from our youngest members to our young adults to our elders. And all growth starts with a seed. So, exactly. Today we want to thank some of the wonderful people who are like gardeners at the fellowship. They care about all of the kids who are here and they carefully tended to you this year so that you could grow big, big in kindness, big in spirit, big in curiosity. And we want you big because then you can share your love and your gifts that you have as individual people with the world. Who are they? Who are we talking about? Who's our gardeners? Trey? <laughs> Good. Any, anyone else? Who are the people that took care of you this year at the fellowship? You yeah, what do you think? You. Izzy. Yeah, yeah, we have adults that did that. Yeah. So, um, oh, yes. They are, so they're our teachers. You know, you know our teachers. Our child care providers who's been in the nursery. Yes, um, our youth leaders and our youth mentors and our guest stars that visited us in our classes this year. We had a couple of guest stars that were great. So we're gonna take a look at who these people were. Yeah, and if they're not here. Yeah. many amazing volunteers. So if your name was on the screen today, uh, raise your hand because we want to say thank you. So kids, you see all the people with their, look at all these people with their hands up. Oh, and guest oh my stars. gosh, we have the guest stars yet. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, teachers, you'll raise your hand and um, you are going to take a, uh, one pouch of seeds to each of them. And when everybody has their seeds, um, then we'll have you take your seats. Yeah, so everyone who saw your name on the screen, please raise your hand so the kids know who to take seeds to. Go ahead. And you can just keep coming up and grabbing more until they're gone. Yeah, you can keep okay. grabbing them until everyone whose hand is up has a seed pouch. And those of you who will be receiving these um, seed bombs or flower bombs, yeah, um, they have native uh, wildflower seeds in them and pollinating seeds. So you can plant them wherever um, you want to see some flowers growing. Thank you so much to all of our RE volunteers. And if you are sitting here today and thinking, hey, it might be fun to spend some time with our kids and our youth, I hope that you'll talk to Kim about how to get involved in our RE program. She's always happy to talk about ways to get people engaged. Thank you all. You can go back to your seats once we'll all this, a bit once everyone's okay, hands thanks, down. Trey. And I, one more thing to the teachers. So on your way out, there's a table. Uh, we've got some succulents up there. And um, I hope that you choose a plant from the table to take home with you as a reminder of the growth that you tended this year. And we hope that those plants remind you of the care, the love, and the work that you put into making the world a better place by helping to light the path of our young people. So please
please stop at the table, find a succulent that speaks to you. I also want to say that none of this would happen without the leadership of our Director of Religious Education. Oh. Oh my God. 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 Allie. Kim, we thank you for your leadership in our program and for loving on our kids and, um, yeah, really tending to that growth that you talk about. Holy moly, Haley. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay, so that's not making me sad or, or uh, feeling sentimental. Uh, it's time? Okay. So we're going to begin our bridging ceremony. We're going to hear from Pangerbon. Pangerbone Quick first. Hi. So I'd like to start um, by kind of introducing myself. I'm going by Pangerbone Quick now. Um, I used to be labeled as a Quick Laughlin family, so you might know me from that. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll get right into it. I remember when I was little, coming here to play with all the other littles. I'd look around at all the teenagers and elders, wondering if I'd ever be that big. As I grew, I started to see the distance between us become less of an ocean and more of a river. I found myself walking alongside this river, surrounded by my peers, learning about the other bank, learning about how to treat others, how to stand for what I believe in, and how not to lose track of my individual journey. I found it important to remind myself that my life is, in fact, an individual journey, and although it might be impacted by others' experiences, it does not and should not rely on those others. Learning to live an individual life where I hold strong to my values, no matter the adversity I face, has been one of the hardest challenges I've had to overcome as a young adult. When I was little, I would base my thoughts, opinions, and values upon those who nurtured me. And although I've been raised by wonderful people, surrounded by a community of love and belonging, I do believe it's still important for me to question and to come to my own understanding of what life is and should be. Traversing this river now, from little to big, I find myself wading through the many fish uh, that, um, the many fish that are others' wants and visions for me. Some I will capture and carry with me through my travels. Others I will dissect so I may learn their true meaning. And the few that are harmful, spiky fish, I will view from afar, vowing to keep my distance. Those who know me know that I am truly individual, self-guided, self-reliant, self-motivated. To those who don't, I'll admit it may sound a bit selfish, but I have learned by helping so many that I must also work to help myself. This is my journey. This is my river to cross. As I go from little to big, I hold on to many of the traditions and values passed to me by, my, by those before, but I will also strive to change and grow into the purposeful individual I know I can be. So I thank those who've taught me and I thank those who've allowed me to be inquisitive and occasionally snarky in my quest to enlightenment. As I cross my river from little to big, the vast distance I once thought to be untraversable is now within my grasp. I welcome the many challenges and experiences to come as I welcome, to grow, as I welcome and grow to appreciate these many fish in my net. Thank you. Thank you, Pangerbone. Mia Miller is next, and um, she's not able to be with us today. She's actually off on a traveling adventure. So she contributed a song that she wrote and gave us the video. So here's Mia with Breathe in Love. energy. 
Next up is Annika Ernest. Good morning. Good morning. It's lovely to be here. It's lovely to see all of you here. I am so grateful to have grown up in the fellowship, a community imbued with love instead of fear, a community which fosters learning and evolving throughout our lives and encourages pursuit of personal truths. One of Walt Whitman's most famous quotes is, we contain multitudes. It's one of those quotes that, at least for me, I have seen so many times that I tend to overlook it. But when I sit with it and think about it, I totally understand why it's so famous and I see it everywhere. Like, we do contain multitudes. And as in all things, in our pursuit of spirituality, we contain multitudes. I am proud to say that the fellowship has supported and nurtured every multitudinous aspect of my personal journey. And I'm so excited to carry the values I have developed here into my future. Thank you for growing with me and encouraging me to explore our blue boat home. Thank you, Annika. So finally, we hear from Nick Schiller. <laughs> Good morning, once again. Um, obviously, I have this prepared speech, but we'll see how much I actually stick to it. So um, obviously, I'm Nick Schiller, and I am very honored to be here with all of you, and thank you so much. It's also great to be bridging with these amazing individuals here um, as they have had quite the journey as well along with many others. So I have been attending services and many other events involving the fellowship since I was around five or six years old um, and thanks to my mom for bringing here, because, me here because she also expanded her horizons and uh, came here and met obviously my now stepdad Eric and I'm just very happy for that. <laughs> um, 
So I can go back to when Dottie and Roger were the main ministers who I deeply miss, but also love them. Um, and I also remember my little brothers, Quinn and Ari, who are here today as well, uh, being dedicated here. Of course, the fellowship has played a very influential role in my parents' relationship, like I said before, um, as this is where they met. And I could name the endless memories from being an RE to helping in RE classes and being a lead child care provider, which has been amazing as well, in the nursery. The amount of love and open arms for relationships to be built over the years and to continue to be built has been very impactful on our family and our future as well. I plan on attending Stevens Point to pursue a career as a child life specialist uh, who assists children in or who assist children in the hospital or care facilities who have challenges, but also walk their families through the process. I have worked alongside children for many years now, and I am excited to observe how they grow and learn from themselves, as it is an experience I've obviously experienced myself, but it's, it's just really interesting seeing that over time. I've primarily attended services and heard sermons since I was young, and the experiences have changed greatly over time. Especially in sermons uh, in the past few years, not only has our world seen changes in negative and positive, I have also viewed different perspectives, and they have been applied here as well as when listening to the sermons. A topic that really stands out to me is being involved in the community, especially with social justice. I am very passionate about making a difference not only in our community, but within certain relationships we have as well. Of course, I have a, a drive to engage with others about certain topics, but I am also very intrigued on how others in the community need to play a role. I also am very passionate about having like a genuine relationship or friendship or connection with people rather than just like, obviously being nice and caring is great, but having a genuine connection is amazing. Um, the fellowship has been a very safe and open space, not only to me, but many others to help encourage more inclusive inclusivity and we have more groups that include so many different walks of life. Our whole thing is to include others, which is amazing, um, which is one of the main things I've learned from being here this whole time and has helped build who I am. Um, while our, our futures are full of uncertainty and change, I feel that is a very important part of life. Not everything can be planned. Of course, you can have an influence on how the future plays out, especially from past experiences. But there is also a lot that will just happen and we don't know for sure until the time comes, which I find beautiful in a way because it's, it's, it's an experience. I have loved coming here most Sundays as it has helped form who I am. <laughs> I hope to continue to attend services either online or in person wherever I may be in the world as this community is very important to me. Thank you to, to all that are here in person, online, in another place in their lives, and to who all who have moved on in their lives. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nick, and thank all of our youth. It's gonna be time for our bridging ceremony, so. Um, youth, you can come on up, please. <clears throat> and we'll have you stand on this, this side. It's all right. Um, so each of them will receive a lit candle in a rose. During our baby dedications, parents and adults carry the candle for their children. And Bridgers, you are crossing an important threshold of adulthood and now carry your own candle. <laughs> a flower is a symbol of the unfolding beauty of life. Roses are known for their beauty, but they sometimes have thorns too. Life is both beautiful and painful. <laughs> I'm, I'm <laughs> We hope to help you live in that complexity and to support you in moments of beauty and pain. 
If you are a young adult between the ages of 18 and 35, roughly, um, we invite you to gather over here to welcome our Bridgers. Any young adults between the ages of 18 to 35? <laughs> Come, on, Come on, Grace, I see you back there. Yeah. <laughs> what about your friend? Come on. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh, good. <laughs> so children and the other people who are under 18, we want you right over here, right behind all of our youth. But please don't go on the stairs. Just stay down on the floor. This is really nice because you can help our people who are going from their childhood to their adulthood. Thank you. I invite all of us to participate in the responsive reading that will be on the screen. First, I will read, and then the young adults will respond with the words on the screen. Then our children will have a response, um, our children and youth, and then our bridgers, and then the whole congregation. Let us join together. Today, we honor you. The bridging youth, we send you forth into adulthood. Now that you have crossed this bridge, we welcome you as our peers. Mm -hmm. We always have a place with us. You can go ahead and wave them. <laughs> And now Kim will invite you to cross the bridge. Welcome to Young Adulthood, Bridgers. Thank you all. You may return to your seats. What a beautiful morning to celebrate seeds and blooms. And isn't it appropriate that it's a rainy day, rain nurturing the growth in our natural world. We first got to recognize the seeds that our RE volunteers plant when they spend time with our fellowships, children and youth. We got to honor the growth of our bridgers from youth to young adulthood, taking with them all the ways that they named, that they've been shaped by this community and our UU faith to blossom. And when you think about it, this process of planting seeds and growing and blooming, it's happening in all of us every day, in small ways, in big ways, even when it's hard to see. Even when the world can feel hard, a little bit bleak, right? In honor of these seeds and blooms, I share with us a reading adapted from the words of Unitarian Universalist minister, Reverend William Rice. In his 1969 Flower Sunday prayer, he said this. 
on a day such as this, may great change come upon us. The sounds we have been hearing have been discordant. The sights we have been seeing have been violent. The words we have been reading have been hateful. All of this has been wearying, discouraging, and distracting. In our hearts, we have a dream of love. In our minds, we had a pattern of community. But this has been a sorry season of discontent, most difficult for visions. Today is a new day. Truly an hour for hope and joy and gladness. Let us be thankful for the persistence of flowers and open ourselves to their long wisdom. Often flowers grow in spite of terrible winters, in spite of miserable summers. Strange beauty greets us in unexpected places as if there is a particular grace that is stronger than our carelessness or indifference. But when we tend our gardens with love and care, the reward can be greater than the effort. Amen. Our Unitarian Universalist Flower Communion, as we celebrate it today, was begun by a Unitarian minister named Norbert Chopik and his wife, Maja, who served the large Unitarian congregation in Prague, Czechoslovakia, during World War II. This uniquely Unitarian ritual invites everyone to bring flowers to the table, flowers of all shapes, sizes, smells, colors, just as we have done here. A vibrant bouquet symbolic of the community of lives whose experiences, beliefs, and gifts come together in ways that are truly more beautiful together than alone. Chopik's celebration of diversity was not accepted by the Nazi regime at the time. But he refused to be quiet, refused to stop working toward a world where the lives of all people, not just a select few, were valued for their inherent worth and dignity. For his teaching, his preaching, and his action, but specifically for the crime of listening to a foreign radio station, Norbert Chopik was imprisoned at a concentration camp. It is said that even as a prisoner, he and others secretly celebrated the flower celebration using blades of grass. He died a prisoner, but the hope and message of Chopik lives on in us today. We seek the courage to continue to proclaim this message loudly and clearly in the face of a world that continually fails to recognize the power of diversity, the strength of difference, and the gift that is community. When we celebrate our flower communion, we bring a flower. It's a gift. We bring it freely. Sometimes we bring no flower. Sometimes we've got nothing to give. It's just like how we come to this community freely, bringing the gifts that we have to offer, sometimes just bringing ourselves. And we leave with a different flower than the one that we brought. We're not the same. We are transformed by community. In community, we seek to continually remain open to the lessons that we receive from each other, to be changed by the presence of our community to hear experiences different from our own, to challenge our biases, to examine our beliefs, and to deepen our commitments. Let us bless these flowers together. I invite you to reach out your hands toward the flowers. You can wiggle your fingers, send some energy, send some gratitude, send forth love. Flowers, we are grateful to those who have planted your seeds. We are grateful for the sunlight and the soil and the rain that nurtured you, for the gardeners who keep watch over you,
for the hands that brought you to this room today, and we thank you for your growth. Thank you for showing us resilience. Thank you for making the world beautiful. Thank you for reminding us of the beauty in each of us and the beauty that is community. We bless these flowers with love and hope and joy. Amen. Since, as we've said, this is a uniquely UU holiday ritual, our young adults who bridged this morning, I want to name that you are now tasked with carrying forth our UU faith, and our rituals and traditions are in your hands. For this reason, I invite you to start our lines of flower communion. You can come up and start three lines around the table. And everyone else is invited to join the line, one of these three lines behind our youth. You can come in from the middle or the sides. Our youth will hand a flower to the person behind them. You will hand a flower to the person behind you. And we will continue picking out flowers for the people behind us moving down the line. If you're joining on Zoom, we invite you to lift a flower to your screen as a part of this community's bouquet as well. Mm -hmm. We pick one for the person behind us.
Won't you join me in singing De Colores to the first verse? Um, we'll do that first verse, which the lyrics are up there in English, uh, and the hymnal is 305. You're welcome to stand. I'll take you in here. the colors we see in the springtime with all of its flowers all the colors when the sunlight shines out through a rift in the cloud and it showers all the colors as a rainbow appears when a storm cloud is touched by the sun all the colors abound for the whole world around and for everyone under the sun. Thank you. Have a seat. Thank you all. Our time together is coming to a close for this worship service, um, which means that our time to return to our daily lives is beginning. Remember that there are always ways to get connected here, even online, to live your faith more fully. Please be sure to read our weekly scroll e-newsletter, or let any of us know if you'd like to be added to that mailing list, and check out the back of our order of service for some highlights about what's coming up. After the service, the annual meeting will begin at about 11.15. So we invite you to grab a cup of coffee or refreshment quickly before that. And if you are a member, make sure that you've registered for the meeting. If you're in person, that registration happens at tables in the hallway outside. If you are online, there is a link that will be put in the chat box. Child care for our young friends will be available during the meeting in our RE wing. We ask that one parent or guardian accompany their child or children to the RE wing and check them in as we do an RE class. Each child needs a name tag and needs to be checked in on the clipboards. In child care, there will be snacks, so make sure you let the adults know about any food allergies or sensitivities. And after the meeting, uh, you'll follow the same procedure that you follow after RE classes, waiting in the hallway until we call your child. We invite you now to consider something from today's service that you want to carry away from you, away from here, away from our gathering this week. Perhaps a phrase, a topic, a song, or something else. It's our hope it will provide inspiration and empowerment for you until we are together again. So please join me in our unison 